On the 22nd day of October, Halloween gave to me 22 pool corpses, 21 groovy ashes, 20 Japanese giallos, 19 kung fu vampires, 18 haunted marches, 17 eternal lonelinesses, 16 cursed VHS tapes, 15 spectral snapshots, 14 mothers murdering, 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Bettys baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 Goldwyn shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a mass talk being creepy. Welcome to day 22 of our 31 days of Halloween. Uh, I had someone on the Discord just recently talking about the length of the introduction. And yes, yes, it is only getting longer. Uh, by the time we get to uh, day 31, that is going to be uh, fully half the episode. Um, all right, so we are in our stretch of just classic movies. Movies, uh, in some cases, I haven't seen before but are held in such high regard that I, I need to see them. Uh, this is not one of those. Uh, we are talking, of course, about the original Poltergeist, the fact that there is a sequel, uh, or a remake, rather. Although kind of a sequel, because they sort of mention it anyway. Doesn't matter. Uh, point being that there is a second version of this movie that is absolutely not worth your time. Um, but... The original Poltergeist is one of the best horror movies ever made, uh, in my opinion. And uh, some of you may disagree with that, and let me give you my reasons why. It's hard to believe that Poltergeist is now 40 years old. Uh, that makes me uh, feel quite old indeed. Uh, but having watched it again, I still feel like it is as relevant as it ever was um, in terms of you know, the, like the the brilliance of Poltergeist is it says to the audience, it doesn't have to be a castle to be haunted. It doesn't have to be some old manor that was built in Victorian times. Um, you know, they, they, in fact, uh, there's a line in the movie. I think it's James Karen, uh, actually, in the movie who makes the comment about, like, this is not, you know, some haunted estate or something like that. This is... The, you know, this was all built a couple of years ago. And so how on earth could it possibly be haunted? And I, 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 like I said, I think that's kind of the genius of the movie is to suggest, you know, it doesn't really matter when the house was built as long as the, the inciting incident of the haunting happens, uh, and then you're kind of hosed, you know? And, and that's what happens in, in Poltergeist that, you know, the, the modern suburbia, the, uh, um, you know, the house right around the corner, the house that you live in is a, as likely to be haunted as any, you know, uh, m you know, manor or mansion, uh, that you can think of. Um, so the, you know, the premise itself, I think is wonderful. But uh, let's get into it. The, the, much like Evil Dead 2, it's, you know, I'm not going to try to co convince you, I don't think, that like Poltergeist is a great movie. I think everyone kind of agrees that it's a really good horror film. So instead, I kind of want to focus on elements uh, that, that make it a superior film. And one of those, I think, is just what we were talking about, the, this notion that um, it doesn't have to be a place that looks haunted or has been around long enough to gather a haunting that it can be anywhere. And some of the stuff even happens in, in the daylight. Um, it, which also I think is a, a wonderful trick at the, at the hands of, of good horror filmmakers. But the other thing, um, that poltergeist is kind of known for is this debate over, did Toby Hooper direct this? Was Steven Spielberg really directing the movie? And I think the answer lies somewhere in between. I think Toby Hooper really was at the at the wheel for most of this movie, but I also think that Steven Spielberg absolutely was nudging him in certain directions. You know, they wanted a, a, a PG movie, and you can argue that they delivered 
maybe not a PG movie. Um, <laughs> or, or, you know, not because of anything in particular, although the guy pulling his face apart is maybe not a PG film. Like, it, it's I, I've had this ongoing internal debate about whether or not to show the kids Poltergeist. And they're, they're 10 and 11, and they enjoy scary stuff a little bit. The girl more than the boy, uh, but she's younger also. And I wonder if it's not too much. And I've had people tell me like, oh yeah, I mean, it, Poltergeist will scare the hell out of anyone, much, much less a, a child, uh, because it is uniquely designed, it seems, to scare children. And that, I think, is partly the influence of Spielberg, who juxtaposes the ordinary with the supernatural. And that's kind of one of the Spielberg hallmarks. Like, Jaws is very much the story of a, you know, a sheriff, a chief, who goes to an island and is trying to fit in and is, you know, uh, dealing with the locals and that kind of thing. And then the shark happens, you know, that there is a story there beyond the story of the shark. You know, the, the characters are, are uh, lived in enough that um, you don't need the shark story to have a movie. It just makes a better movie than, you know, the story of a chief trying to acclimate on this island. And likewise, you have, at the beginning of Poltergeist, a very real, you know, may maybe slightly nostalgic, you know, a, a little uh, gauzy kind of lens view of suburban life where, you know, you have the argument with the neighbor next door over the clicker, uh, changing his channel, and, you know, this wonderful scene uh, that kind of harkens to the scene where they're comparing scars in Jaws of let's just have this moment that's kind of a human thing between people before we get into the horror stuff where uh, Craig T. Nelson and Joe Beth Williams as the parents are just talking about their daughter sleepwalking and maybe it comes from Joe Beth Williams' side of the family and they're also like smoking a little weed uh, which at the time was a little more, you know, not daring but it, you know it, it was not legal in most states uh, or in any state at the time but they're you know previous hippies right they grew up in the 60s they're uh, they were teenagers uh, during the the you know turn on tune in and drop out uh, era and so there is this kind of fading um, you know hipsterism the, the this fading of their youth, but they're still kind of living in that place of where they met and fell in love. And there, there's even a great moment <laughs> where when the uh, weird stuff first starts happening, where Joe Beth Williams uh, says to her husband in the film, you know, I want you to think back to that time when you had an open mind and I need you to remember that part of you as we start to talk about the weird stuff happening in the house and again, it just feels really human. It feels real. Um, and so when you get to the horror stuff, it makes it more palpable and it makes it more frightening because you are dealing with people that you kind of know and care about. And, you know, they're like, <laughs> even with Craig D. Nelson real reading, really like, you know, Reagan, the man, the president. And this is at the time when Reagan was in office. And, you know, it's this sort of subtle nod that Craig T. Nelson has has bought into the 80s, that he is, uh, you know, sort of a Reagan Republican. And and it, you got to think that maybe his wife isn't because she's the one, you know, smoking grass and, and talking about being a little more free thinking. Um, and, you know, that kind of stuff informs so much of the movie that you know that there is a life between these characters before anything supernatural happens. And and so that juxtaposition, I think, is just... It, it, it's absolutely genius in, in the movie. And that is, of course, sold by the fact that you have, <laughs> you know, Joe Beth Williams and Craig T. Nelson as the, the parents, as the freelings in this movie, Diane and Steve. And, 
they are incredible. Uh, particularly Joe Beth Williams. Like, Craig T. Nelson is great as the father. Uh, but Joe Beth Williams is so funny and, and excited. Like, when she first is describing what it's like to, you know, move across the kitchen floor. And she's just thrilled about it. Uh, because it's like this brush with the unknown. And she's really excited uh, that, you know, she has an opportunity to, to experience this mystery in life. And... Um, but also when things get bad, her terror is also obvious and, and it's, uh, it brings you with her because she, she's got the fear of a, a parent, you know, of a child being in danger of, of being missing. You know, there, there's that great moment where she's trying to get to her kids at the very end of, of, uh, the movie and she's just screaming, give me back my children. It you know it's it's horrifying if you're uh, uh, dealing with kids the thought that you know these vulnerable kids are um, out of your reach that they're they're close but you can't get to them and they're facing something that's kind of inexplicable and terrifying um, and yeah so she's just amazing and Craig T Nelson's good as well like every performance is good I also really really like uh, Beatri Beatrice Strait in the movie as Dr. Lesh, the the woman who comes in t with the investigators. And another favorite scene of mine, like my favorite scenes in the movie are less the horror scenes, although I, I like all of those. But it's those quiet moments in between where, um, you know, Dr. Lesh is talking to Diane about how she feels like, uh, you know, how crazy is it that I'm in your home? I've, I've, I'm the one who should apologize to you because you're perfectly wonderful, lovely people. And here I am bringing these people into your house and all this equipment. And, um, and w when, you know, after, uh, the, the big event in the, in the whole, uh, again, just a, a brilliant scene of the ghost coming down the stairs that they videotape. And one of the guys like not coming back after, you know, he pulls his face off in the mirror which is an effect that doesn't necessarily hold up, but it's still real gooey and chunky in a way that it's hard to deny. Uh, but but after that scene, when Dr. Lesh is like, hey, he's not coming back, I will be back, and I'm going to bring help. And, you know, it's like these connections between the characters that are just, like, heartbreaking and heartwarming and... Um, it, it's so good, uh, and very few horror films manage to capture the dynamics of a family and, and the love in this family, uh, quite as well as Poltergeist does. And so when it does get around to being a scary movie, um, you know, you, like I said, you, you care about these people, you, you want them to be all right. Uh, and you know, particularly because the movie is smart enough to go after the most vulnerable character of, of, uh, Carol Ann, you know, Heather O'Rourke's character. Um, and, and that kind of brings me to the scares themselves. And it's strange to me, given all that we've talked about, that there seems to be a real kitchen sink approach to scaring the audience in this movie. Where it's like, okay, well, what are you scared of? Well, here's the tree outside your house that uh, this kid thinks is going to eat him. And here is some kind of demonic stuff. And here's this guy pulling his face off in the mirror. And here's some maggots. And here uh, it, are, are graves popping out of the ground. Uh, and corpses in a pool. Something that you probably didn't think you were scared of. But now when you go into uh, a pool... Uh, you can think about, you know, coffins pushing up and popping open uh, as you swim. You know, here's here's the, the loss of a child. Here is you, the helplessness that a parent can feel in the face of a child in danger. Like, it is just everything that you can throw uh, and more. And that, in a way, shouldn't work. You know, that it, it's too much. Or the clown, like, oh my goodness, the uh, the the clown uh, attacking poor Robbie. You know, that kind of stuff shouldn't all work together in the same movie. You know, uh, they're, they're wildly different kinds of approaches to the scares in the movie. And yet, it totally works. 
you know, and it uh, maybe it speaks to the fact that you you are so bought into the characters that when these things start to happen, um, you're you know uh, overly sympathetic or or empathetic that you're real tuned in, so you don't really question the fact that it's like oh well so just anything kind of goes in this house but sort of um you know it's not completely wild it's not the the steve minor house uh for example <laughs> which is a little more freewheeling but it's you know it's a lot of stuff and a lot of different kinds of stuff it it, it doesn't try to scare you one way it tries a bunch of different ways to scare you as an audience member and i think it all really works i i think it it, it it's really terrifying at times it's you know it, the movie also captures that sense of wonder when you brush up against the the supernatural like this um as if that's happened to me but it you know the the excitement that gives way to terror and i think maybe that's what makes it work is that originally it doesn't seem like something that the characters are are afraid of but then you know it, it becomes clear that the it they would be foolish not to be terrified and it, you know it's just it's so good it's so damn good this movie um i think we'll leave it there I think that I, I think I've I've spoken my piece on uh, on Poltergeist. I mean, I could talk about it forever. I could talk about the scene where they go to ask their neighbor Ben uh, if he's seeing anything weird and how giddy and goofy they are as parents um, because they're just like we know what we're about to ask. This person's ridiculous. And, you know, by the way, we're also smacking at the bugs, at the, the mosquitoes. Um, you know, there every little moment of this movie, I kind of love. It's one of my favorite horror movies. Um, and, and one of my favorite movies in general. I, I just, I, I think that the, the, the scares are good, but more than that, I love these characters. I wish that I could, you know, watch another two hours of Poltergeist. Uh, it's the old Roger Ebert thing of no good movie is too short and no bad movie or, or no good movie is too long and no bad movie is too short. And this movie, uh, and I'm not talking about Poltergeist 2, which I think is, you know, dreadfully inferior. Um, I'm thinking, you know, this movie in particular, the, these characters, the way that they talk to one another, the way that they, they act around one another. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated by Dr. Lesh. I'm fascinated by Tangina Barrett. Um, who, you know, we barely mentioned Zelda Rubenstein, but she's terrific in this as well. Um, that, you know, the conversation she has where she's kind of preparing the freelings for like, this is what's going to happen. And I need you to understand the danger, but also that, you know, I'm here to get your daughter back and, and that kind of thing. It's just, oh, it's so good. So good. So, uh, enough uh poltergeist love uh you should absolutely watch poltergeist it is it, it's the seminal halloween movie as far as i'm concerned it is the the one thing that um like i said i'm kind of debating whether or not i want to spring it on the kids but also i really want to experience watching poltergeist maybe it's a little too early but you know we'll see um so uh but i recommend to you listening to this you should absolutely uh, check out Poltergeist, the original 82 Poltergeist, if you haven't done so. And it's the 40th anniversary, and there's never a better time uh, to celebrate a movie than on an anniversary. And to, you know, reflect on the fact that for 40 years, this movie's been scaring the shit out of little kids <laughs> and, and doing the Lord's work. So, uh, all right. Uh, as always, be sure you are subscribing to the Legion podcast feed to get more uh, bonus stuff like this. If you are not already a subscriber, if you're listening to this on the Dark Parade feed, then uh, be sure you are also subscribing to the Legion podcast uh, podcast feed. Um, if you're listening to this on the Legion podcast feed, then please, please, please come over to the Dark Parade uh, where we will have more and varied stuff coming soon uh, after we wrap up the 31 days of Halloween. Although I'm in no rush to do so because I enjoy it so damn much. And so I will wish you all a, a wonderful Saturday. Uh, here in uh, Tennessee, it is nice and cool and crisp, and we are going to be 
uh, buying pumpkins today to make jack-o'-lanterns. So I hope you enjoy your Saturday. Uh, we are closing in on Halloween. We've got a bunch of great movies uh, left to go. And uh, please come back tomorrow and we'll talk about yet another one on the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Thank you.